Today I'm going to show you a super easy way to add movement to your still images using basic software you probably already have. We're going to add an easy Ken Burns effect that pans and zooms across your image. This is perfect if you're making images with Midjourney's new pan and zoom tool and you want to share these images on social media. The motion adds interest and showcases all the new added details. I love creating these sweeping cinematic pans and zooms, but I don't have Adobe After Effects, and I really don't have the time to master this monster program. So today we're gonna to make the motion easy. We're gonna be using iMovie and PowerPoint. And yes, I said PowerPoint. Stick around to the end where I'll introduce you to a bonus technique for getting smooth zoom transitions in DaVinci Resolve. You really can do this. First up, iMovie. If you've got a Mac, iMovie is probably sitting on your computer collecting the tech version of dust. Don't worry if you've not used iMovie before, it is really simple. If you have another video editor, I'll show you the key principle that transfers to other apps. Start by opening iMovie. Now click the plus sign to open a new project. Drag your photo into the timeline. And you're done. No, really, you are iMovie assumes that you want to pan over the image and you already have a Ken Burns effect. Hit the play button to see it in action. But you have more control over the panning effect. Just double click on the image in the timeline and you'll see the panning tools. Notice there's even a tab called Ken Burns. Look at the boxes marked Start and End. These are the keyframes. All the video programs I've seen work this way with keyframes for panning. You set the start keyframe, what you want to see before the panning starts, and then you set the end keyframe, what you want to see at the end of your pan. Then there's an arrow showing the direction. The panning motion moves from the start keyframe to the end keyframe. In iMovie, you can easily drag and move the keyframes if you want more or less motion across your image. The program automatically adjusts the speed of the pan. How fast the image pans depends on the duration of the image and how far the pan has to go between the start and end keyframes. If you want to move slower, lengthen the clip or move the start and end keyframes closer together. If you want to move faster, shorten the clip or move the keyframes further apart. You can even add pan and zoom at the same time. Drag the corners of the keyframe to reduce the size of the box. Now iMovie will pan and zoom in at the same time. Save your video by going to the File drop-down menu, click Share, and then choose the File option. It will quickly save your video to share on social media. I'm a big Peak Design fangirl. I have been ever since their first Kickstarter camera bag came out. Peak Design makes the best camera bags and straps, and I have a whole selection of their products in my studio. I have bags that have gone all around the world and barely show anywhere. New to their lineup are these amazing mobile phone cases and accessories. They're gorgeous, protective, wildly slim, and feature a built-in locking system that's faster and stronger than anything you've seen. Click the affiliate link in the description below. It's a great way to get a quality product and support this channel. But what if you don't have iMovie? You can easily do the same panning effect in PowerPoint of all places and save it as a movie. Open PowerPoint and drag in an image. Go to page setup and resize your page. I'm gonna post this on Instagram, so I'm going to make the canvas square. It doesn't matter if you size up or down. Drag the edges and make your image fit the canvas. Notice that some of your image will spill off the frame. Click your image and go to Animations. Now click Path Animation and choose Line. Now drag a line down the middle of your image in the direction you want it to move. We're going to fine tune this in a bit. Click Preview and watch your image fly. We need to change some of these defaults. Slow down animation and have it start with the previous. 
Now we're going to fine tune the path. When you click on the animation line, you can see shadows of the before and after image. These are in essence keyframes. Position the end of the animation to show start and finish positions. You may have to play with this a little bit. When you're happy with the animation, click the file drop-down menu and export as a movie. But what about zooming in on an image? That's easy. Put the end keyframe inside of the start keyframe. But what about transitioning to a zoomed out version of the image, like you can make with the zoom feature in Midjourney or outpainting in programs like DALL-E? Start by making a series of zoomed out images. I've done these in Midjourney using the two times zoom out tool. Drag your images into iMovie and add them to the timeline. Make sure they're in the right order. I've changed the length of each image to two seconds, but you can play with this. Double click on an image and you'll see iMovie has added a start and end keyframe, one in the center and one is the full frame. I'm gonna put all of my start keyframes in the center. Use the reverse button to switch the keyframes and make them all the same. Now add a transition to get rid of the hitch or jump between images and smooth out the effect. Click on the Transition tab and add the Cross Dissolve transition to the space between each of your images. You can fine tune the result by making the center keyframe smaller for more of a zoom. Simply drag the corners to change the size. You may need to play with the size a little bit, just make sure the center is always centered. You can zoom in with iMovie, but it's not very precise. So I'm going to jump over to DaVinci Resolve. This is a major video editor, but it's free to download and we can get a more precise zoom effect. And it's really not that hard. The program looks more complicated, but the principles are the same as iMovie. Once you know this one trick, Zooming in is actually even easier in DaVinci Resolve. Open DaVinci Resolve and start a new project. Drag in the images and make sure they're in the right order. Again, I'm going to change the length of each clip to two seconds. Now here's the trick. Highlight all of the image clips and open the inspector panel. Toggle on dynamic zoom. That's it. Really, that's it. Now open the transition panel and drag the cross dissolve transition between each image. Put it right on the boundary between the images. So drag out the edges of the transition so it takes up half of each image. Click Quick Export to save as a movie. A little animation makes still images much more interesting. You can easily get the effect without investing in expensive software. iMovie makes panning and zooming a complete breeze, but even PowerPoint can get the job done. Let us know if you find a cool way to animate still images in the comments below. And share your images on social and tag us at Making the Photo. Be sure to like this video if you found it helpful and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to be notified when I post more easy tutorials and photo inspirations. This is Jen at Making the Photo. Let's make something amazing together.